Hello, our students uh, in pharmacognosy course of pharmacy students at Uppsala University in Sweden in May 2021. And the aim of the course is that uh, by the end, you will present the project in 15 slides, maximum of eight to 10 minutes recording. And I'm sure you will do it uh, really in an excellent way. So uh, therefore, I will take you to the tour in the lab it started from the extraction, isolation, and my colleague will continue with the next steps. So let us start with the extraction. So from this, you will see that we start with the plant material, and here is the plant material. So if it is this size, do you think we can do the extraction? I think not. It should be grounded. So we use the ground machine, which is like the kitchen machine, and we put the plant material here and we start so it will make uh, like that then we will get the plant material in ground form in very small particle like you can see here so it is very powder here it is so this is the powder which we should work with then we start the extraction and there are several methods of extraction First is maceration. Maceration means that I take the solvent, I put the solvent, and leave it overnight for checking. Then I filter it. And you can, we can, if we don't know the work, if, if the plant is studied for the first time, and you would like to get everything from the plant and to work in safe side, then the best way is to use uh, uh, organic solvent first, like DCM, for example, or DCM methanol, then you leave it overnight and you filter it. After you filter it, then you put polar solvent like water, like this way, you can see. And you will keep it again overnight. This means it is a stepwise uh, extraction or in extraction according to increasing polarity. In this case, you are in the safe side. And you can see here, when you put water, it is started to be colored. So this is one way. It means that you will have two extraction. The first one is organic phase, which is the DCM methanol, for example, and the second is water. This is one way. And then we will put this on the shaker overnight. This is one way of scale. Another way is reflux by using, for example, methanol or ethanol water. When you do the reflux, you will see that the vapor goes up, then you, it will face the condenser. Condenser means that the water coming in and going out. It means that it is cold. So the vapor will face the cold system, then it will go down and it will percolate. The advantage of this is very quick, that it can be for only one hour to three hours, depending on the amount. And you extract everything, including polar compound, like phenolic compound or polyphenolic acidic compound, glycosides, uh, uh, etc. Another way of the extraction is like you make a tea. So you put it here for half an hour and you leave it to cold, then you filter it as usual, all the method. And this is very effective and you call it decoction method. So this decoction method you extract directly, especially glycosides, polyphenolic compound, etc. Right? So this is another way of extraction. In between of room temperature or maceration method, reflux or heating, there is another way which is called ultrasonic. And this ultrasonic, you use the time, and you can use temperature as well. And here, you can see the extraction after some time it makes it is effective as you can see here so this is after two hours you can see the extraction went well so this is several methods of uh, extraction according to your aim of the work so if you don't know the plant for the first time i will advise you to use still uh, uh, wise extraction by using the maceration if you know the targeted compound or the plant has been studied before and you know what you are going to do, you can use the other methods as well. Now I will show you the shaker where you can put the plant material overnight. So, 
this is a cheap one and you use it like that and this is a thin one then it will be steered overnight likewise so it takes longer time than the other method after we do this uh, uh, extraction we have the filtrate now we go to the room of evaporization we need the extract, not the solvent. The solvent helps us to extract the material. Then we go to evaporization, and this we can see here the we can see here rotatory evaporator. So rotatory means rotation, and the evaporator because it evaporates the solvent. So. Now we can see that it will go quickly. So we start it, it will take like one minute. So, here is the bump, right? And this is the pulling, and we'll go to the pressure down. This is a rotation, so you will start to see. Look. So, this is a vaporization, so it will go quickly. Then you can see that it evaporated like that, and then you get the solvent here. So, this is, is a good way for the vaporization of solvent for the temperature below 100. It means that for hexane, DCM, methanol, etc. This is as well. You can see it here as well that this is the evaporization also. Now you can see that it evaporated. And you can see the evaporization goes quickly and you get the solvent here. Right? So, now we finish the evaporization when it is organic solvent. But what about if you use reflux or decoction? In this case, we must use freeze drying. And the freeze drying from the name, it means I must freeze the sample first. So I use dry ice. So here is the dry ice. You can see here. Of course, it's very cold. Right? This is a dry ice. Right? And you can see the sample is frozen, right? So after you froze, freeze the sample, then you will come here and you put it here in the freeze dryer. So it is the same idea. This is a cooling, but much more stronger bump here. And usually when we get the water extract, it is usually in the powder form because it's freeze dry, right? After we finish, this extraction. Now we are going to the exciting step. So we take the extract and then we start to use the method. It can be column chromatography and this is very easy to use and very easy to see as well. So it is a stationary face as I explained to you before which it means is a mattress we use and then you put the extract here. And this is a mobile face. Then you start the illusion like that. So it goes according to increasing the polarity. And here you can see that a uh, it started from colorless to colored one, and it is more than more intense color. Right? So this is the idea of chromatography. A stationary face and the mobile face and the compound is will be separated according to polarity. So this is a very old fashioned technique. Now we go to a, a newer technique and we call it HBLC connected with SCBE. SCBE stepwise. What this means, we take the extract we get from the rotatory evaporator over there and we absorb this extract with silica gel. So your extract is here. And we use SCBE column. Then we start the elution. But the elution here will be automatically hexane, acetate, methanol. 
and the according to the method used here it will be mixed by this bomb and only this comes here so after mixing automatically using the method it comes here so i don't make manually only changing the fractions and you can see the yielded fraction here it started from dark colorless to green dark more then and this will be the end is brown it means this is a good sign of separation so another way we can use also instead of this manual collection we can use fraction collector which we can collect the 60 tubes like that so now we finished SBE another method is that after we do the fractionation we can use preparative HBLC preparative HBLC means that the column is big like this one so this is preparative right so it is uh, we have the method then we put the sample you put it here and everything will be done automatically so we put the sample here and then we prepare the L1 and we have the method using this computer then we start the method and everything will go automatically and we got the fractions here collected to 60 uh, uh, tubes 64 tubes and this is the yielded chromatogram you can see it is a correlation between retention time and relative abundance. This is a, a peak and this is another peak. What is the difference? Here this is this means that it is very concentrated and the mixture of many compounds. But this sharp peak means it is single compound. But it is rather good separation, which I can see from the chromatogram. And this is according to the different wavelengths started from 200 until 365 so it means i catch every compound so no compounds will escape from me so here i depend on my eyes in sbe cola but here i depend on a uh, uv detector so the student will be very anxious to get pure compound so he would like to come to this room and use this art of technique of chromatography in order to get pure compound now he is in the right way because it is very good separation now it comes the exciting step did he get pure compound so he can go to analytical and the analytical it is the same idea of HBLC so this is the, the column uh, here right and then the solvent is and again it's the method used here by the computer right so we start the system and the element will come from here goes inside and mix it again here and only come through this tube to the column and the outlet is here now the student is anxious to see the results oh he looked at the chromatogram and you can see here that there is only two weeks so the student start to be happy now i can be do further purification till I get only one beak, which means that most likely it is pure compound. Then you do further uh, work and started to see what is the chromatogram. So this one, it was two compounds, remember. Then go to the next one and see, oh, a student to become very, very happy because he get only one beak, right? And by the way, this is the gradient solvent. You can see it from this way as well. So the student become very happy because he was the first challenge. He get pure compound, which most likely it is pure compound, but we cannot confirm. The confirmation of the pure compound must be done by the mass and the MMR. So this is, is the idea of chromatography. I will show you the last one, which is LPBLC, because we talked about it in our lecture uh, uh, several times. It is the same idea of SCBE, but we use this column here, like the same idea, so I will not waste your time. And the difference is that we use UV detector, so we can get the chromatogram as well and the fraction collector to collect the 64 tubes. After the student collected the 64 tubes, then he is anxious to see the results. So what he do after 64 tubes? He can do mass spectrometry, just a mass to get molecular weight. So we go to this room to get the mass spectrometry, which means that, hey, 
So if we use this mass spectrometry, which will explain the in details by my colleagues, he gets a mass. And if he sees that tube two and the three contain mixture of compounds which is similar, he can collect it together. And if you see it is pure compound, you go to this fancy machine, which is Q-top, which you can uh, uh, ident help you to identify the compound as well as by NMR. I hope with this you can get an idea about our work. And I wish you all the very best. Bye-bye.